sleeves rolled up, ladies and gentlemen, of the RPW Network. Today is a KR day, and today is a Rise day like no other. Ladies and gentlemen, last week on Rise, we experienced a 30-man gauntlet match. History was made as my twin brother RK became the new junior heavyweight champion. Of course, he is not in action today because of his back, but fear not, ladies and gentlemen. No randomizer will today, but again, it doesn't matter. Not one. Not two, but three championship matches here today on Rise. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be one of the biggest Rise shows in all of Regents Pro Wrestling. We're kicking things off with an eight-pack ladder match, ladies and gentlemen, with a championship on the line. Halfway through the show, there is a five-man match for another championship. But then the main event today, ladies and gentlemen, a six-man elimination chamber, all randomized for a championship. Now, I don't know what championships are up for grabs, ladies and gentlemen. I've not been told that much knowledge. All I've been told is that there are three title matches. So again, the predictions have started backstage. I'm sure the predictions are going on. Make your predictions right now. Three titles on the line. What championships do you think are going on? On the line. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no tag team because it's an eight man. Well, unless. Well, I guess the eight man could be a tag team. Eight man ladder match opening, maybe potentially. So it might be a tag team, actually. But five man, unless a team. Unless it's 3v2, there's no <laughs> there's no uh, tag team championship available for that. Uh, of course, RK's not in action. So those tag teams. Uh, the RPW tag teams are all, you know off the board. The World Tag Team Championships, we don't know who the number contenders are. So. Is Poke defending? Is Lambin defending? Is Jocko defending? Even though he's halfway through an Alaska's tournament. We don't know what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm very, very excited to dive right on in. As well as that stuff, I can confirm, ladies and gentlemen. Here today, second match, we have Ryan Curtis against Street Money. Of course, Street Money on World Wars and went up against Ask Crow. Now he's going up against Ryan Curtis. We have Monday v Friday beef. We also have Leo and Gore versus Disciple Zeke and Disciple Colm. Brand v. Brand tag team action, ladies and gentlemen, which I think will be absolutely fantastic. We have the new man Howdy Hunter going up against Mr. V in his RPW debut here today. We also have a number one contenders match for the Cruiserweight Championship, ladies and gentlemen. The king of the Cruiserweights, Oliver Freaking Kings, now like 58 days with three title defense. He is bringing that Cruiserweight Championship up to new heights, ladies and gentlemen, and you've got to respect him for that. So without further ado, we're going to dive straight in to the opener, eight-pack ladder match with a championship suspended high and mighty. Ladies and gentlemen, roll your sleeves up. This is who we are. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a white belt. There is a white championship suspended. A sold-out crowd here in London, England, of course. I can't quite see what that belt is, but coming up first, it is Jessica Austin from Friday Night Fury. Ladies and gentlemen, an eight-woman ladder match to kick off Rise. This is what I'm talking about. Jessica Austin with an opportunity for a first ever RPW Championship here today. Love that entrance. I love the Rise Arena. It looks amazing. I'm hoping we get a, a zoom into the the champ. Is that the women's well, the women's World Championships on World Wars and with this superstar uh, Willow Sky. So this isn't the women's World Championship. It's not the Liberty Championship because that's green. It's the Evolution, but the Evolution was the Evolution is supposed to be just on. Mondays, or, or just on Friday, sorry, because they swapped. I keep getting forgetful, of course. Willow Sky, the first ever Regents Rumble winner in the women's division in RPW. I'm interested to see what this is for, ladies and gentlemen. Seven superstars ringside. Eve Torres, Hope Eternal. I saw Willow Sky. I see Alex Bishop, Tressa Lam, Nicole O'Grady. And last but not least, we have Madison Fox of Fran Nafira. So it's a brand v brand match. We have Hope and, and, and Willow Sky and uh, Nicola Grady from World Wars. We have Madison Fox, Jessica Austin, Eve Torres from Friday Night Fury. Ladies and gentlemen, I am being told that this is a brand new championship in Regents Pro Wrestling only on Rise. Ladies and gentlemen, the Divine Women's Championship. Oh my goodness, what a belt that is. That front plate is beautifully crafted, ladies and gentlemen. Eight females in the ring. The bell has been rung. The belt is 
suspended a high. The Divine Women's Championship, I've been told, ladies and gentlemen, is only a Rise Championship. It's it, it, it's a cross-brand Women's Championship, which, again, we have, like, the Cruiserweight Championship, the Randomizer Championship. We have belts that, you know, the Junior Heavyweight belts that can be defended uh, on both shows by the men. But now, the women get their own cross-brand championship as well. Here on Rise, again, it can only be defended on a Rise show, ladies and gentlemen. The Divine Women's Championship, we're going to make history here today. Whoever wins this match is going to be the first ever Divine Women's Champion here on Rise. And this might be to Vince's way of making, you know, slowly implementing Rise into its own show, ladies and gentlemen. Because we've spoken about that before. And if that does become true, maybe the Divine Women's Championship will be the Rise, you know, special championship. Which would be absolutely incredible. It was a beautiful looking belt. I'm sure there'll be pictures backstage of it. As well as Sky is now alone in the ring. With Jessica Austin climbing blows to the chest. Going to knock her to the outside. And have the ring all to herself here. Potentially going to be able to use that ladder to climb on up. No, she goes out instead. Back in the ring is Jessica Austin and Tressa Lamb. Irish whip. Rebound. A nice kick to the chest. With a roundhouse kick as well. We are coming off an amazing World War Zone, ladies and gentlemen. I should say... Of course, KR commentates on Friday Night Fury now. KR misses those World Wars and days. I love the blue brand. I always have history for the blue brand. And what happened in that main event? Ladies and gentlemen, let me just... I don't want to talk about it the entire show. I don't want to ruin Rise with World War Zone sullenness. But I don't get to talk to you World Wars and guys anymore because I'm not on Friday. So I'll talk about it on Friday as well. But I want to talk about a bit now. What we saw on Monday is unacceptable. Ladies and gentlemen, you know firsthand that KR was not a fan of the ministry. I was not a fan of what Ben Fuller done. I was not a fan of Poke, RK, Vinu, whatever they all done last season. But after seeing how they've spoken, especially the leader and the savior Vinu, after seeing how he's spoken backstage, how he's done his promos in front of the crowds, how he's addressed the RPW universe and the RPW superstars, I can firmly say after that main event, pure shenanigans from the cure, and from Jocko, ladies and gentlemen. Again, some people like Gordon, Nicole, or Green, they're not siding with the ministry, but they're siding with the fact that there is shenanigans being done by the team captain, if that makes sense. So you don't even have to say, I'm part of the ministry once. So you don't have to do all that. As long as you can accept and, and, and agree on the fact that there is, uh, you know, sulliness going on on the part of the team captain. He's the team captain. He's supposed to be in charge of the World War Zone brand. And if he's abusing his powers for the greater good of his own team, that is not supposed to be allowed. That's not fair for the rest of the World Wars on roster. So I'm not surprised people are speaking up on it. I'm glad people are speaking up on it. KR stance, just in case you was wondering, I stand with the Ministry with what they're saying. I stand with the likes of Dragon Romanic. Again, it's not just the Ministry now. It's not just the Ministry. It's Dragon Romanic. Gore has spoken up about it. Kyle Akanye has spoken up about it. Luca Novak spoke. Other people outside of the Ministry are speaking up on it as well. So it's not a mere, a mere point of saying I'm with the Ministry. I'm with the group that all together agree that what Jocko done in that main event was not acceptable. That's all we're going to talk about for now. Again, I'm sure backstage it will continue to go on for weeks and weeks and weeks, but... That's all chaos going to say on the matter. I don't want to see any more of that. I think it ruins World Wars on, especially after World Wars had been built up so much last year when I was commentating on it. I hated to see that. I really did. On a better note, ladies and gentlemen, that 50 man match, 50 minute match, sorry, on a World Wars on was absolutely spectacular. Congratulations to all those involved in that 50 minute match. It was absolutely fantastic. World Wars on overall was amazing, but again, solid and dampened by the main event. Alex Bishop setting up in the ring. He was going with some. German suplexes. Alex Bishop going with a suplex in the ring, leaving Hope Eternal up in the air. The RPW Universe loving this one. Claymore from Madison Fox. Alone in the ring. Two bodies down, a ladder in hand. And ladder's been set up by Madison Fox, of course. A lot of these superstars have never been a champion in their RPW career. And that's what Rise is all about. That's what these championships are all about. Madison Fox, two hands on the Divine Women's Championship, ladies and gentlemen. As she works away on those bars up top. Trying to unscrew the championship. Tressa Lam goes up with her, though. And Tressa Lam is going for something. Jessica Austin and Hope Eternal working together to push the ladder down. And both Friday superstars plummet to the ground, ladies and gentlemen. What an opener on Rise. A brand new championship in the women's division. I love this because, again, the men have had so many cross-brand championships. 
Uh, that, but, you know, all superstars can go for. The men have so many opportunities they can go for. I love. Also, I love the fact, that men or women, it doesn't matter. The fact that Rise is getting Rise-only championships, you know, I think make it even more awesome on Wednesdays because now we can expect more championships on Wednesdays. Because, of course, the World Heavyweight, the Universal, they can be defended on Rise, but most likely they won't be. They'll be safe for pay per of the, the brand shows. So now that Rise is getting their own belts that can be defended, I think is amazing, ladies and gentlemen. Brett's camera work still... A lot to be desired, ladies and gentlemen. But Madison Fox on Friday night, Fury climbs the ladder. Hope Tano and Alex Bishop could not get the ladder down. And Madison Fox is your new and the first ever Divine Women's Champion atop the ladder. Look at that, but ladies and gentlemen, one of the best looking belts. A bit of purple in there. Look at that belt, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely beautiful. Fantastically done from Madison Fox to be the first ever divine woman's champion again that belt can only be defended here on rise fantastic opener let's move on with some blood v blood pro got the win against money on monday and now it's time for ryan curtis to step up to street money of course if you've missed what's been going down with the new bloods ladies and gentlemen uh they are no more uh long story short the new bloods are no more they are no longer together. And here you can see the New Bloods members. Again, they, they might be friendly still. It's not like they're enemies or anything like, that, uh, anything like that. But Street Money's going through them one by one. There's a super kick to the face of Ryan Curtis. Turn buckle. Frog splash by Street Money missing. And that's why the six foot seven man does not go to the top rope often. Missing the target on that one. Ryan Curtis with an up on his shoulders. Nice. Hanging him on that top rope there on the golden ropes of this Rise Arena. In the corner, in Zaguri. Street money goes down. Ryan Curtis, little handstand, little cartwheel. Into a little splash on the logo, middle of the ring. Referee's there, just a no count. The street money powers out of that one. And the power, street money using that power. Six for seven. One of the taller and stronger superstars that was in the New Bloods. Goes for a cover. He gets a two count on Ryan Curtis and a kick out there. Curtis now from behind. Ripcord Lariat. As down goes Street Money. Forced to roll out of this one as well. Back into the ring now. Street Money. Nice takedown. As he goes for a sharpshooter. That's Street Money. But a rope break is called from the referee. I'm trying to work out if they're boos or cheers. I feel like the Open of Universe. More boos than cheers for Street Money. Face first. To the canvas goes Ryan Curtis. Street Money with his coloured tattoos going for another money elbow. On the logo is Ryan Curtis. Back up on his feet now. Nice takedown, no. Elbows to the side of the head go Ryan Curtis. Now Street Money into the corner, no ripcord. Another rebound. Big kick to the face, down goes Money. Ryan Curtis getting some momentum in this one. Another Irish whip off the rope. Rebound, oh my goodness. Lovely manoeuvre there from the Friday man. Ryan Curtis getting the upper of universe on their feet. Excited for this one. Street money in the corner. Ryan Curtis, elbow to the face. Look at all these lights in the crowd. Street money goes with a curb stomp. Face first goes Ryan Curtis and hooks the leg, ladies and gentlemen. Referee's there with the count. One, two, and a kick up by Ryan Curtis. Big resiliency there. Back up to his feet, head first. Swinging round. Face first goes Street Money off the canvas. Ryan Curtis bleeding from underneath that headband there. Right hand against reverse. Kick to the midsection instead. And Street Money again. Gut wrench. Has him up and down. He goes face first. Street Money looking good in this one, ladies and gentlemen. He got squashed by Crow. He needs a win. And Ryan Curtis is seeing that that does not happen. I thought Street Money has put him down twice now for the win. But instead, Ryan Curtis kicks out twice. And the match continues. Here on Rise. Back into the ring. Street Money and Ryan Curtis going back and forth. Blood for blood, ladies and gentlemen. Right hander from Ryan Curtis. Chop from Street Money. Right hander from Ryan Curtis. Chop across the chest from Street Money. Ryan Curtis retaliates. Street Money. Look at this. Back and forth, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. Back and forth. Oh, Ryan Curtis gets the upper hand, though. He has money in the corner. But when he fights back, Ryan Curtis asking for another one, ladies and gentlemen. He wants two chops. 
And he keeps on going back and forth, one after the other. Who's going to come out on top in this one? Ryan Curtis wins. Eventually, they go ham. Right hand is flurrying and flying from both superstars. They separate. Oh, and Street Money comes out on top. So awesome back and forth between these two. I mean, there was in a stable. They know how each other work, to be fair. As Street Money goes for a DDT off the middle rope. Brutal maneuver there. Ryan Curtis back into the ring. What a clothesline. From money into a second one. Ducks Ryan Curtis. Power slam. Nice. Maneuver there on the logo. Hooks the leg. Fantastic. Man, this match has been way better than the Crow match on Monday. Oh my god, Ryan Curtis kicks out again. How is Ryan Curtis still in this one? Street Money does not know. And I do not know either. Street Money with the hands up. He's taking this in. The big 6-7 man. Is that a mistake though? Submission middle of the ring. Street Money nowhere to go. Surely not going to tap out to Ryan Curtis. He's struggling. Oh, he taps out, ladies and gentlemen. Ryan Curtis makes Street Money tap. After he got so many close two calls. Both of them in the ring. Ryan Curtis extends a hand. And Street Money reciprocates. They shake hands after their hard-fought battle. The New Bloods sharing some respect still. But what a win for Ryan Curtis. We move on to some tag team wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, Empire of Pain versus The Cure here today on Rise. Leo and Gore. Leo, of course, now on Fury. Gore on Monday. Comb on Friday. Zeke on Monday. Gore and Comb have been ostracized from their stables via the draft, ladies and gentlemen. They're all alone on their respective brands, but now they get to go up against each other. Of course, uh, Gore... And Zeke on opposite sides of the illustrious tournament right now. So they could be in the finals together. Who knows? Of course, depending on the rigging and shenanigans from the illustrious Jocko, we don't know what's going to happen over there. But I'm sure Gore would love to get a punch or two in to Zeke's face. The green lights are on here in the Rise Arena. I love a little cross-brand tag team action, ladies and gentlemen. One from Friday... One from Monday, teaming up in their respective stables. And there is the randomizer champion, Leo. Has not defended it yet, I don't think. Looks good with the belt. Empire of Pain representing. And here we go. The stage is set. The ring is ready. And the crowd are excited. Leo and Disciple Comb start in this one, ladies and gentlemen. And Ron, for a Toxic Thursday referee, is refereeing this one. Former US champion, Leo. Former whatever champion. Ooh, that time ago is Disciple Colm, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, Colm not got off to a good start. I believe he's 0% right now in Season 3. A lot of the Disciples uh, have got off to an awful start. I need I remind you last week, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Disciple Drew and Disciple Zeke losing to the New Bloods. Losing to Street Money, ladies and gentlemen. If it can't get more embarrassing than that, I don't know what can. But, um, of course, when they have... Grandpa Jocko in their corner. Anything's possible. But without that, without the rigging and the cheating, New Bloods were better than The Cure, ladies and gentlemen. Just make that known worldwide as he comes in with a big spear and goes up against Leo. Now, we know as well between these two, ladies and gentlemen, if there's one man that does not want to fight Leo, it is Zeke after their history. So we'll see if he can break his curse or if Leo will continue his dominance over Zeke for another year. Nice knee strike to the back of the head. I don't even want to see God. No, no, no. I mean, to be fair, Gore v. Zeke. Again, it could be a preview of the illustrious tournament, but Leo's history of Zeke and his pure dominance of him, especially after... You know, before, I wouldn't have a favorite in this match. I'll be like, I just want a good tactic match. But now, I just want to see Cure lose. I want to see Cure lose, ladies and gentlemen. Sollying my former brand World Wars, and I can't believe it. Uh, Zeke sends Gore back first into the corner turnbuckle there. Hooks the leg on Gore. Leo comes in, but just a one-counter kick out. Tom tagged in. Now, one-on-one -on -one against Gore. Going for a little springboard is the vampire. I feel like Jocko's just sucking all the blood out of Disciple Cole. Maybe he's using it for himself or giving it to Zeke and Drew. I don't know, but he's looking grayer than ever, ladies and gentlemen. Grayer than ever. Lock up to his feet is Gore now. Lock up by Cole. Irish whip off the rope. Elbow flush to the face. Down goes Gore. Plumbing to the canvas. His left boots and the left forearm to the face of Gore. Down he goes. Zeke watching on from outside. Leo can need that tag in. Gore not looking good. Face first in the corner. An attack is made. Zeke is back in. 
In this one, the two World Warzone superstars going at it now in the Rise Ring. Irish Whip off the rope. Left hander taking the wind right out of your nice combo from the Disciple Z kick to the back as well. And if this is anything to go by, uh, for like Zeke will absolutely wash past Gore. Of course, Zeke has to beat uh, Liam West first, and Gore has to beat Cebu first. And then I think they're on opposite sides, so then they have to beat. I think Gore has to be Disciple Drew before he even gets to Zeke, but who knows? Here comes Leo, though, a man who knows all about beating Zeke, but he gets hit by the spear first and foremost. Zeke going after Gore as well, making it known he's not a fan of Gore. Again, maybe keeping an eye out for his future illustrious tournament matchup. A little submission there by Leo. He'll get Zeke back up to his feet. Irish Whip rebound, shoulder block. Takes him down. Leo needs to stay in this one. If there's anyone to beat Zeke again, it's Leo. He knows how to do it time and time again. I need to look at the tail of the tapes off this match to see their official record. As Leo gets the upper universe on their feet. And excited for this one. Back up to his feet. Lock up. Oh, Leo's going for the tag. Gore's not been doing well in this match. Mr. Tag Team. And he's failing the most in the tag team here today. Maybe he can do better now against... Zeke, I love the look, look. Look how big these guys are in EOP Empire of Pain. Just four absolutely massive, massive men. It's a great stable. And it's about time they do something in RPW. And it starts by taking down the Cure here today on Rise. Nice leg takedown from Gore. Focus on that left leg. As Colm watches on the grayed out vampire. And Gore gets reversed again. As soon as Gore comes in, the Entire momentum shifts to the cure, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe he's a secret op with Jocko still. We know he has a history with him. It would not be a surprise. Disciple Colm distracting Zeke there. Got in his way, and now Gore can take over. Lovely move. Colm can't come in now, of course, with the new RPW rules. He can't come in. Goes for the pinfall. Does Gore on Zeke? Oh! Kick out two and a half. Gore almost had it, and he thought he had it as well. Lovely maneuver there by Gore. Strong Irish whip into the corner. Zeke goes to a top turnbuckle now. And Gore's looking for something. He joins him. On the top turnbuckle, Gore is gone. Oh, he's holding him up with the top turnbuckle. Oh, and head first goes Zeke. Onto that top turnbuckle. Brutal from Gore. Attacks made to Leo. Do not let Zeke go out. He is hurt. He's holding the back of his head. Maybe Zeke might miss his illustrious tournament match. If he gets injured... Ladies and gentlemen, Leo kicked in the midsection. Zeke reverses. Zeke reverses and the headbutt connects. Oh, that could have been all she wrote for Zeke. He makes the tag, though. And Colm comes in. That could have been all she wrote for, Go uh, for Zeke. Gore's hit off the rope. Colm goes with a springboard forearm to the face of Leo. Gets Leo back in the ring. Gore is still down and out on the outside of this one. Leo with the Inzaguri. Lovely reversal there. Beautiful reversal there. Leo gets him back up to his feet. He's trying to take Colm over to the corner. Gore is back up and waiting for a tag to get back into this one. He gets it. Gore is back in. Leo with a knee strike into the midsection. Gore with a knee strike to the midsection. Hooking both arms. Double suplex out the corner. Lovely maneuver there. Colm wants Zeke back in. And it's Zeke and Gore. Once more, another spear. They need to block that spear from happening. We know Zeke does not like Leo. Gore rolls out. And Zeke makes sure Leo doesn't get involved either. Takes him out of the corner as well. Ron going to start his count here for Gore. And Zeke is going to join him. Gore with a reversal on the outside. Throws Zeke into the timekeeper's area. Kind of seven now. Gore's going to return back into the ring. Runners out of count of eight right now. Zeke outside. Count of nine. Gore gets involved with Disciple Colm into the ring. He's the non-legal man, though. It does not matter. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? A count of 10 means a cure lose. Zeke could not get back in the ring. Gore and Leo with the win. Zeke flustered and floundered outside. Guess what? Grandpa Jocko was not there to tell him to get back in the ring. So he didn't know what to do without his god, without his master, uh, right there to tell him to get back in the ring. He didn't know what to do, ladies and gentlemen. He was looking around, not knowing what the right call was. He stays outside. And the cure get the loss, ladies and gentlemen. Thank goodness for Gore and Leo. Oh, what a day. Seeing Cure lose, what a day. Leo gets another win over Zeke as well, ladies and gentlemen. Some things just don't change. Colm is still 0%, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic stuff.
Gore and Leo. Gore gets the momentum going into that illustrious tournament as well. Good luck to Jocko rigging the rest of the rounds. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue here on Rise with two big meaty men. Howdy Hunter in his second match in RPW. And Mr. V uh, making his debut here today. Both in the black trousers going one on one. We saw Howdy Hunter tag team with Jax Hunter on World Warzone. Mr. V is also a member of World Warzone, ladies and gentlemen. Going to be interesting to see how these two go against each other again. They don't really know too much about each other because they're both really, really new. Of course, Mr. V's debut and uh, Howdy Hunter's just his second match of his career. Where they don't know much about each other. There hasn't been enough film to study just yet. Mr. V goes outside the ring for some reason. Gets back involved though. Lock up. Howdy Hunter, a man mountain. Literally a man mountain in this one. Goes for a big German suplex pro. Howdy Hunter makes Mr. V look small. I didn't think that was going to be possible. When I saw Mr. V signed to RPW, I didn't think that was going to be possible. And here we are. He looks absolutely tiny compared to Mr. V. He can't even hold on to him from behind, ladies and gentlemen. Howdy Hunter with a clothesline into the corner goes V. Howdy Hunter's going to be a tough man to take down this year on World War Zone. Especially with Jax Hunter in his corner as well. It's not a nice tag team to be against. Back into the ring goes Howdy Hunter. I think it's a kind of six for Mr. V right now. Hunter in the corner taking a break. Mr. V back into the ring. He knows how to get back in the ring. Unlike Zeke, ladies and gentlemen. Big chop in the corner. Down goes Howdy Hunter. A cover from Mr. V. Is it enough? It is just a one count. Howdy Hunter as Mr. V. Against the ropes. Over he goes. Mind that we still have two championship matches to come here today and a cruiserweight number one contenders match, ladies and gentlemen. The main event is a six man elimination chamber match here on Rise. One of the biggest Rise shows we have ever had in existence. It's going to be a long one as well. Still so much action to come here on a Wednesday. And we had a cure loss. It's a fantastic day, ladies and gentlemen. We already have a new Divine Women's Champion, Madison Fox, as well, with the first title in RPW. What a great show it's been. The superstars back into the ring now. Howdy Hunter getting booed by the RPW Universe. Showing off his big arms. I mean, they certainly are. That's for sure. He has Mr. V. Up in the air and head first on the floor. That's what he hit Christian Coke with. On World War Zone. Hooks the leg. Ron is there. One, two, and Mr. V kicks out. I thought that was going to be all she wrote, but... Mr. V manages to hold on for a little while longer. Mr. V's waiting for him. He's stalking in the right hand. Oh, here we go. The back and forth between the two. We saw this earlier with Ryan Curtis. And Street Money. And again, like I say, Mr. V's a big guy. But compared to Howdy Hunter, he just looks like an ordinary man. Howdy Hunter getting the advantage as well. In this one, oh my God, Mr. V busted open from that big right-hander. And Howdy Hunter is taking over. And I think that's all she wrote. The lights are running the crowd. He has him up. Howdy Hunter. Head first goes Mr. V. Middle of the ring to continue his 100% record. Her leg is hooked. Ron is there. One, two, and three. And Howdy Hunter gets the job done handedly, ladies and gentlemen. This man is going to be a problem on World War Zone. That is for sure a monstrous performance indeed. Three matches remaining here on Rise. Ladies and gentlemen, up next, we have a five-man match. And guess what? There is a championship on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, guess what championship you think is up for grabs? As we have Kai Ju Jaeger making his way to the ring, ladies and gentlemen. As he's excited for this one, Kaiju could potentially be a champion in RPW here today on Rise. Now, it should be said, I've heard news on this championship, ladies and gentlemen. This championship is basically taking over from the randomizer title only on Rise. I want to make that clear. The, the randomizer championship is still going to be spun on Mondays and Fridays. Don't you worry. But this championship, ladies and gentlemen, it's just... A fun championship. It's not on the same level as the IC or the UK championship. It's nowhere near the level of a brand championship. It's more like having a randomizer championship. 
You know, you get used to holding a belt. You get used to being champion. It's a fun championship to have. It's going to change hands a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, if you remember Toxic Thursday, when it first launched as a minor show, we had the Toxic Thursday championship that was defended every single Thursday. Ladies and gentlemen, here today, making its debut to Vince Shimon, has signed a deal, RPW and YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us every single Rise show, there will be the undisputed YouTube championship defended on Rise every Wednesday. There's no wheel spun. It will be defended every single rise show ladies and gentlemen which i think is going to be fun again these rise championships right now because rise isn't so show it's a fun brand to be on it's a fun show in front of a london crowd in front of a house show it's a fun show to be on we have the divine women's championship and now we also have the undisputed youtube championship ladies and gentlemen big up to vince by the way signing a deal with youtube of course, RPW is the number one wrestling show on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. So it only makes sense that one of these five will be the first ever undisputed YouTube champion. GMK, Bruce Court. We have Drip Messiah, Kaiju, Jaeger. And last, but not least, here on Rise. And the five-man match to become the first ever undisputed YouTube champion. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Flash from Fury. Five superstars in the ring. Again, a fan favorite, a fun belt to have ladies and gentlemen it will be defended every single rise show and it is a beautiful belt as well ladies and gentlemen the undisputed youtube championship up for grabs between these five ring that bell and let's kick it off it's a lovely looking belt it really really is a beautiful looking belt a front play we've never had before. Five superstars up for grabs. Remember, there's still another title match in the main event. A six-man elimination chamber match in today's main event, ladies and gentlemen. Five-man match here today. We have Kaiju and GMK, two fan favorites, two OGs. And then we have Bruce Court, Drip Messiah, and Flash. Three rookies up for grabs to be the first ever undisputed YouTube champion here today. It's already been an, over an hour of recording. Let's hope this is not another 50-minute match like we saw on World Warzone. I don't think it will be. I think we'll be okay. Nice take down there by Kaiju. I, I love these superstars. Though again, Kaiju being a champion, GMK being a champion, and that's what is, that, that's the thing as well. It's like more championships in RPW. I love having more titles in RPW. I don't like having more titles when they're the same. You know, we have UK IC. If we had like a European, which was on the same level, I don't like that. Um, or when we had like the World Heavyweight and the Hardcore, like two world titles on one show, I didn't like that. Or the World Heavyweight and Universal, because one is always seen as less than the other. Whereas this YouTube championship is literally just a fun title to have. It's, it's it, you know, on the ladder, it's it's on par with a randomizer title. You know, it's below Cruiserweight, below IC. It's not like, oh, I'm the YouTube champion. I'm the best. You're the best on YouTube, you know, which again, it, it's not like it means nothing. It means something. You're still a champion. You're still defending it every week, uh, every show. But it's just more fun on Rise for these London crowds. And I, I for one, love it. I think it's a beautiful looking belt. And I think we can have some banging matches with it. Like, if you think back to Toxic Thursday, the reason they got brand of the year because that toxic thursday championship back in the day had so many amazing matches anyone can appear for it you know we could see massive names we could see rookies debuts fan favorites like gmk v's kaiju right now i think it's gonna be a fun belt let me know what you think and let me know who's gonna be the first ever youtube champion there's a little microphone ringside there someone's found a microphone where bruce court is and it is a fool's count anywhere as you can see as well, Ron taking his time to get out, though. He's going to have to be quicker than that. At least now, if they're outside, the action can still end, ladies and gentlemen. That was the problem with the 50-minute match. But now, even these five outside, they can still get a pin for off, ladies and gentlemen. GMK to the steel steps. Kaiju making his way outside. Ron, you might as well just stay outside, my friend. Suplex by Flash to Drip Messiah. Two Friday rookies, of course. Going at it over there. Lovely camera work by Brett. Flash with the cover now. Kaiju comes over. Really high arching camera work here by Brett. Run back into the ring now with Drip Masai. He's going to have to come back out though. Oh, Drip Masai misses. He misses, ladies and gentlemen. With the Springboard Kaiju's up top left there. Incapacitated by the steel steps. The other four continuing their battle on the outside. What an opportunity for these three rookies. And again, for two fan favorites who haven't held a championship in so long, Kaiju and GMK. Massive opportunity for them. 
A championship is still a championship. But like we say, with the randomizer, even sometimes just holding onto a belt, even if it's just for a week or two, it gets you used to being a champion and having championship matches. So the YouTube championship, it's a fun belt that can also help you progress to your mid-card championships, to your cruiserweight championships, and more, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's going to be great. Rick Messiah now back into the ring, as is Flash, ladies and gentlemen. Bruce Corton will also join them. Jim came with the cover outside, though, which Ron has to keep an eye on. He goes over there for the cover, but no. He does not get the pin for off. Grip aside flash now. Alone in the ring. It looks like Ron is down outside. Nice suplex there by Flash. Nice spinning camera work by Brett. As Kaiju springboard takedown. Ron is outside. As you can see, Hurricane Ron by GMK. I love the new camera work that Brett has been working on, ladies and gentlemen. All around the ring. And it looks beautiful. GMK, nice clothesline. He's going for a springboard and connecting. Triple threat in the ring. Bruce Corton, GMK going one-on-one -on -one now. Has him up on his shoulders and slams him in the middle of the ring on the logo. He would like to go for a pin. He does go for the pin, but Ron again is nowhere to be seen. And Flash does not break it up, but GMK kicks out hand in here too. Ron finally back into the ring. Bruce caught with a nice power slam down. GMK is down on that. Logo now, Bruce Court leaving the ring. Interesting. Again, it doesn't have to end up in the ring, but you had GMK down. I would have kept the onslaught going. Instead, now it's GMK and Flash going at it. In the ring. That's reversal, Hurricane Rana. From the cruiserweight Flash to the cruiserweight GMK. A lot of cruiserweights in this match. Another pinfall in the ring. Run is there. Took too long. Flash going for some weaponry. Under that ring. Oh my god, he's got a guitar, ladies and gentlemen. He has got a fully-fledged guitar ringside now. GMK going flying through the middle rope. Catching Drip Messiah from behind. Beautiful springboard. He goes for the pinfall. Kaiju's not there. Drip Messiah nowhere to be seen right now. As uh, Flash makes his way. Oh, sorry. Bruce Court nowhere to be seen. As Flash goes under the ring. Once more and gets a table, ladies and gentlemen. RPW's favorite Drip Messiah in the ring. Watch him. Nice take down there on Kaiju. Flash into the ring. No face first. Off the apron. Drip Messiah in the corner. Getting some celebrations going. Kaiju, big boot to the face. Big boot to the face. Drip into the still steps. No. Does not get involved in it. Another lock up thrown again. No. He's avoiding those still steps nicely. All five outside. Still Jim Kane. The still steps running board by Bruce Cole. Big boot. By Kaiju Jaeger. Who's thrown into the barricade. And Bruce Court, the only man standing. Kaiju cover. To be the first ever undisputed YouTube champion in RPW. Oh, another kick out too. Wow. GMK and Drip Messiah in the ring. Interestingly enough, but... Will Ron get involved if there's a pinfall is the question. Kaiju thrown away. GMK in the corner. GMK setting up. Super kick in the ring. Super kick in the ring. He goes for the pinfall. Where's Ron though? Ron enters. As does Bruce Core. He doesn't break it up. GMK. One, two. Oh, and now Bruce Core breaks it up. He waited, waited, and waited, and then finally broke it up at the end. The new sweeping camera angles. How are you liking them, ladies and gentlemen? Brett testing out here on Rise. As Flash goes for the pinfall, he's following the action as best he can, but kicked out at one. Is that a submission by GMK? It is indeed a submission, but Drip Messiah not going to tap out in this one. Right up close and personal with the action like never seen before in RPW. Drip aside, thrown into the ring. Nice from by Kaiju onto Flash as well. German suplex reversed by Drip Messiah. Ron watching on. Going to be a long rise, but I'm all here for it. Back to back long rises. Drip Messiah, Canadian destroyer on the outside. Flash in the ring. Drip aside with the cover. Will it be broken up, GMK? Yes, it will. Watch Kaiju. Watch Kaiju. Watch Bruce Court, ladies and gentlemen. Watch Bruce Court. He's not going to tap out, though. I thought maybe there could be a submission win, but Bruce Court staying resilient. Oh, Kaiju cover. Kaiju's going all out right now. Ron, take your time, mate. Bruce Court had to go in the ring to get around there. Bruce Court cover. Oh, he's away from everyone as well. Oh, he's away from everyone as well. Oh, just a one count. Jesus Christ. It's going to be another 50-minute match, ladies and gentlemen. They've been watching World Warzone. Drip and Bruce Court in the ring. Kaiju's going to leave them. And Drip Asai is also going to leave them. He's like 0 for 3 on the springboards. I don't think he should be springboarding, ladies and gentlemen. He's not really cut out for it. Kaiju with the cover. It's going to be broken up quickly. Kaiju GMK in the ring. 
I think one of these two being the first ever YouTube champion would be amazing since they've been here since the beginning. Kaiju has the first ever quote on YouTube. I think Kaiju would be a fan favorite to win this championship. As it comes down between these two in the ring right now, GMK busted open. And GMK starts to take over. Look at this. Lovely close camera where Bruce Court now involved as is Flash. Oh, lovely kick to the chest from GMK. Running DDT as well. Kaiju rolls out of the ring. GMK and Bruce Court now left alone. Springboard. Oh, my God. Poison Runner pin him. Oh, I was going to say pin him. He does, but Drip Messiah enters the ring just in time. Look at the Rise logo in the background as Drip Messiah takes over against Bruce Court. Lovely camera work here. As he now goes up for the pinfall. Kaiju back in the ring. No rope break, of course. GMK's there, though. Brett's been learning his cameras. That's for sure. Rolling code breaker. Pin him. Drip Messiah. No, there's a ladder by Flash. He doesn't pin him. Flash going off the rope drop kick to the side of the face. From GMK, ladies and gentlemen. Drip Messiah taking on Flash now. Average whip to the outside in front of the cameraman Brett as... Pin on the outside is broken up. Oh, Kaiju with the cover. It's broken up by GMK, though. You can see Flash still hanging on as well. Brett, feet, feet on the floor. He's getting involved. Oh, he has to watch out. He has to jump over the barricade there as Kaiju came flying towards him. Love to see Brett get up close and personal with the action, with that camera. He's got to be careful, though. Some expensive equipment, ladies and gentlemen. And he doesn't want to get it damaged. A nice submission there. Kaiju Jaeger. Surely not going to tap out to GMK. Not if Bruce Quart has anything to say about it. Long match again here on Rise. Oh, Bruce Quart submission. Oh, he tapped just before Drip Messiah could break it up, ladies and gentlemen. He tapped just before Drip Messiah could break it up. And Bruce Court of Friday Night Fury is your first ever inaugural undisputed YouTube internet champion, ladies and gentlemen. Big congratulations to Bruce Court. Well, the Cruiserweight number one contender match has been postponed till next time, ladies and gentlemen. There's going to be a match on Fury to determine uh, the king of the Cruiserweight's next Cruiserweight championship match. Ladies and gentlemen, as up next, we have the main event of Rise. Ladies and gentlemen, this main event is a six-man elimination chamber match featuring... 30 total championships between them all, ladies and gentlemen, in one ring to crown the champion. This is going to be massive, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. The chamber is out. The chamber is out indeed. They got a chamber at Rise, ladies and gentlemen. That's how big Rise has become in the past few weeks we have an elimination chamber being built at Rise and Fredo gets a championship opportunity. I've heard it's for a fan favorite belt, ladies and gentlemen. People are probably thinking so Fredo's in a pod. And remember, it's all been randomized, so we don't know who's starting in this one as Dash. Dash is out on the ring, ladies and gentlemen. I've heard these are all former champions involved in the main event. Six-man elimination chamber match as Dash Pedersen is also inside a pod, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, main eventing Rise. Has he ever been on Rise before? I don't know. I don't know. The UK champion, one half of the RPW Tag Team Champions, ladies and gentlemen, the golden child, the golden standard. It is a poke. Main eventing rise and Poke is in a pot, ladies and gentlemen. Double champion Poke. A Poke could be a triple champion if he wins here today, which would be crazy. It would be crazy. FJ. So is FJ. So how many people do we have in a pod now? Is FJ the last in a pod? Or is my math incorrect? We have Fredo. We have Poke. We have Dash. I think FJ is the last in the pod. So the final two are going to be battling out inside the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, has anyone guessed what belt this is yet? I've heard they are all former champions of this belt, which is um, interesting, to say the least. Oh, Charmander! Charmander! Now, I can confirm, Charmander was actually the last man 
to hold this championship, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. The pyro here on rise. Charmed is starting in the ring. And I told you it's a massive match. Ladies and gentlemen, two former world champions are starting in the ring. Main eventing rise. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Dino and Charmander. Main eventing rise. We have Poke in a pod. We have Fredo in a pod. Oh my goodness gracious me. This might be the biggest match in Rise history. It really, really might. Brett has told me, ladies and gentlemen, these are all former champions of the championship that they are fighting for. The championship, just like the YouTube title, will only be on Rise, ladies and gentlemen. It won't be defended every week. It's like the Divine Women's Championship. It's only on Rise, ladies and gentlemen. It is the return of the RPW television championship formerly on toxic thursday one of the best looking belts in rpw history one of the fan favorite belts in rpw history and again rise is all about being the fan favorite show the house show that everyone loves and why not get the tv title involved so rise now has the junior heavyweight title the Divin uh, divine women's championship the youtube championship and the tv title as well as the cruiserweight title can also be defended on it that's five championships that can be defended on Rise, ladies and gentlemen, which is bonkers. Absolutely massive. 30 championships shared between these men in the ring right now. Poke wants to get in the ring, as you can see. Dino and Charmin are kicked things off. This is going to be an absolutely insane main event. Here on Rise, the TV title's back. It's looking good. And here we go. Right with a high arching camera work on top of one of the pods right now. Look at Poke over there, looking awesome. Chamber with a pinfall, just a one count. Dino taking over. There's Dash Pedersen, a long standing member of this TV championship. Of course, FJ had the legendary title defense at Regents Mania. Some awesome memories with the championship. FJ defended against Oliver Freaking Kings at Regents Mania. He had a four defend, I think it's 76 day title reign or something like that. Dash Pedersen lost it to Chamber and then it was vacated, retired, but it's brought out retirement. It's back on rise, ladies and gentlemen. The TV title's back, and it looks as good as ever. Brett getting us in the ring for this action with his camera work, which we much appreciate. You know, taking Charmander to the robo. He's thrown over that top rope there. Of course, these two, again, two former World Heavyweight Champions in the main event, ladies and gentlemen. This is gargantuan for Rise. The biggest match in Rise history, you know, on the ropes there. Charmander looking to take over now. Fredo. In desperate need of a win in Season 3 and a championship in Season 3. Could be the way to get back to winning ways from here. Six former TV champions in action in the main event. We're back up to his feet. Lock up. I think this show might be longer than last show. We had 30 matches last week. But I think this one might be longer. Kick out at one from Charmander. When's the next superstar getting involved? Oh, Charmander. Hand around the throw. Big choke slam from Charmander. From Dino, sorry. Onto Charmander. One, two. Oh, a kick out there just in time. And the lights are going. Who is going to join Dino? And Charmander, ladies and gentlemen, it is Dash Pedersen joining in the sweeping shot from Brett. And it's now a triple threat match. And Dash Pedersen getting straight involved. Of course, never been a world champion. He was known for his TV championship. He's been an IC champ as well. Now has Dash. And could potentially get another championship to his name. Nice suplex there by Dino. And Dash gets involved. Dino busted open. But it's not stopping him from bringing the fight to Dash Pedersen. Charmander's down. Dino with a half Nelson suplex. Beautiful takedown. Again, Charmander, by the way, has eight championships, as does Dino. They are only one championship off Venu with nine. So if one of them win today... They will be joined with Venu on nine championships in RPW history. And a two of the most decorated superstars in all of Regents Pro Wrestling. What a main event. What a match for Rise. This is... Here goes Charmander with a, a powerbomb. What was the last time we saw Charmander use a powerbomb? Before today. Down goes Dino. Of course, Charmander and Dino starting first. Dino not looking great right now. Charmander, Luthers, Press... Round the ring post. Oh, the camera work from Brett is incredible. Cover on Dash. You can see FJ and Poke back there in the corner. Poke was the first ever TV champ, of course. Oh, Dash is eliminated. 
Dash entered after Dino and Charman, and he gets eliminated first, ladies and gentlemen. Dash has to make his way out of the ring as he has been eliminated. Wow! Dino and Charman are outlasting. Number three entrant. Dino might be joining him. No, kick out two. Wow, what a shock. Oh, who's joining us? Dino and Charman. A dash came in number three, got eliminated. Number one, we have FJ, we have Fredo and Poke. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Fredo joining us here today, of course. Former hardcore champion, former TV champion, was a tag team champ on Toxic Thursday. Was also the team captain for Toxic Thursday way back when as well. Fredo, smug and confident in this one, but forgot about Dino. Involved in this one, Fredo, nice reversal. But close on to the back goes Charman. A big boot to Dino as well. Nice takedown. Charman had taken over. Go for the pinfall on Dino. Fredo not going to break this up, of course. It is elimination. The kick out of one there. As Fredo now gets involved behind to Charman. Oh, what a matchup. I can't believe it. This is on. This is like a Regents Mania match. Six man chamber, 30 titles combined. This is massive. And it's on a rise, ladies and gentlemen. It's on a rise. Fredo, another cover on Dino. He's going for a lot of pinfalls on Dino. Of course, Dino's been in number one. So sometimes, you, you know, you might not need a big move. You might just need to get a, a, a lucky pinfall off. And all of a sudden, you can get the three count. But Dino also one of the most resilient superstars in all of RPW history. So again, might not be the easiest feat as well as Dino now takes it to Charma. And I would love to see Dino or Charma to make it to the end. As Dino sets up a submission of sorts. No. He's wrenching the arms back and face first goes Charmander off the canvas here on Rise. He knows Charmander up and throws him down in the corner. Fredo in the other corner. Not get involved in this pinfall. Of course, there's a two count. Oh, and Charmander again. One of the most resilient. I mean, Charmander and Dino, literally. If you have to rank everyone on their resiliency, I think Charmander and Dino are both top three, maybe top five. But both of them are definitely up there in terms of best resilience in RPW. That's for sure. So getting a pin for them. Not going to be easy. As Fredo is thrown off the rope. A nice backdrop there by Charmana. Goes for the pinfall on Fredo. They're trying to eliminate everyone else that enters the ring after the first two. But Fredo kicks out at two. Dino Nas elbow. And here we go. The numbers are coming, ladies and gentlemen. It's between Poke and FJ. Who is going to enter... The ring next, there's a cover on Fredo, kicks out two. Poke or FJ, it is Poke. The golden child Poke has entered FJ. The longest ever TV champ will be entering last in this one. Poke is in the ring. The first ever TV champion. And this has turned into a fatal four-way matchup. What a great matchup this is. I can't say enough. The Rise logo in the background. This is phenomenal, ladies and gentlemen. Fredo taking Poke over. To the ropes. It's almost been a two-hour recording. I think it might be longer than last week. I really, really do. And the camera work today. This has been the best camera work we've ever seen from Brett. Ever. In Regents Pro Wrestling. I love it. Irish whip. Double Irish whip. Poke stays in. Fredo goes out. Lovely knee strike by Charmander. Berdino gets right involved. Goes for the pin on Charmander. They started one and two. He's trying to eliminate Charmander. No, he kicks out. The resiliency continues. You know, going for another pinfall. Really wants to eliminate Charmander in this one. Just to kick out a one then, though. Nothing more. Charmander again. Resilient as ever. Fredo trying to steal one now. Poke enters uh, outside with Charmander. A pin on Dino would have been big for Fredo, but he kicks out there at two. Dino now rolls reversed. Cover on Fredo, but he kicks out straight away. Poke and Charmander getting into it. Outside of the ring. Dino busted open, it looks like. Pokes and face first. Into the cage. And is thrown back into the ring. The most ruthless and dangerous match type in all of Regents Pro Wrestling is the Elimination Chamber match. And these four superstars are going through hell. Right here, right now. Pokes stalking Charman, who's waiting then. Was Poke. I thought he was going to hit like a PKO or something, but he was just walking around. Charman, another pin on Dino. If Charman and Dino lost to the final two, it would be massive. No, they're not, though. Charman against the pin on Dino. Dino is eliminated. 
Dino is not winning the TV Championship in his return. Dino is not joining uh, Vinu on nine championships. Charmed is still potentially good. But Dino is eliminated. Oh, what a submission by Fredo. Reverse Boston Crab. That used to be Pokes' move. And he might tap out. No, he's breaking out of it. What a move there by Fredo. All three superstars gassed and wounded for FJ. Speaking of FJ, he is going to come in fresh as can be, ladies and gentlemen, into this match. FJ enters number six into this match. And I'm sure now he feels very, very confident he can get back that TV championship that he held for 70 plus days with four defense, one being a Regents Mania. FJ's in the ring. Charman has lasted well. But, uh, I mean, the freshness of FJ has to go a long way, surely. Poker the cover using the ropes. Oh, new man FJ. Oh, my God. I thought he went out straight away. I thought I just contradicted everything I just said. FJ with a cover on Poke would be a massive pinfall for him. If he can get it done, a kick out one, though, the Golden Child. UK champion, as well as one off of the RPW Tag Team champions. Not giving up that easily in this one. Could be the first triple champion of season three. Not if Charman has sent to say about it, though. Big boot to the face. Down goes Poke. Irish whip to the outside. Fredo slammed down in the ring now. As he's going to town with uh, FJ. Nice roll over there. Poke getting back in the ring, maybe. He is indeed. All four superstars outside the ring now. Fredo into the pod. And a running bulldog on the outside. Pinfall. Pinfall. On Fredo after connecting with the pod, but he kicks out at two. Poker the cover. On the outside. On to FJ. One, two, and three. And down goes Poker. I might have just missed a PKO in the corner there. As I was focusing on the ring with Chumman and Fredo. FJ, though, is eliminated. The final three are Poke, Fredo, and Charman. Oh, what a main event here. On Rise, we could have a triple champion Poke. Charman could be a nine-time champion joint with Venu. Or Fredo can end his drought and win a championship for the first time in a long time. Massive ramifications for all three superstars. Oh, FaceTime. FaceTime on Poke. Fredo with the cover. On the UK champion. Oh, it would have been massive for Fredo to pin the UK champion. That could have put him in the UK championship division. Oh, Charmander taking over. A Charmander of his Poke final two would feed families. Another power bomb. But no one pins Fredo. He's down, ready to be pinned, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Charmander eventually gets it. For one. For two. No. Just enough time for Fredo to recapture some resiliency there. Since they did not pin him straight away. Charmander from behind. Reversal. By Poke into a PK would have been nice. He goes for the reverse Boston Crab instead. The old school move he used. I think he won the first match of season two with that move. The randomizer championship. Trying to win the TV title here today. It's not going to be done though. Nice DDT. Been a two hour recording. Triple threat. Main event. Fredo. With a reverse Boston Crab. The way he rolls into that is phenomenal, by the way. Absolutely incredible. But Poke is not one to tap out. Poke thrown to the outside. Charmander might win from number one, you know. Number two, technically. But he started in the ring with Dino. He's still in the ring now. The cover on Fredo. No. Poke re-enters the ring now. Charmander taking over. Poke is going for something. Poke needs to go for more PKOs and Poke's laws instead of these... Reverse Boston Crabs that he's going for. Another lockup. Nice suplex. Very nice. Oh, into a big boot. Fredo goes down hard. Poke in the corner. Big spear by Fredo. Right foot to the face. Is reversed. Leg swept away. Poke now. Taking over foot to the face of Fredo. Oh, go for Charmander instead. It might be smart. Eliminate Charmander first. So you're left with Fredo. No disrespect to Fredo, but Charmander. Obviously one of the stronger ones in this matchup. Another rev Again, is that a finish or something? I don't know why he goes for the reverse Boston Crab so much. He barely wins with it. He has the PKO there. He has the Poke's Law. And the Poke's not a submission guy. When I see Poke, I don't think of a submission guy. But he seems to keep going for it. Belly to belly by Poke. 
and connects Fredo from behind. That's the thing with triple threats. You knock one person down, and the other one comes out of nowhere. When you're not expecting it, Fredo with the cover. Just a one count. Oh, Poke finally! With a Poke's Law to Fredo, the sweeping camera angle. Goes in for the pinfall. One, two, Fredo is down and out. We're down to two. It's Charmander or Poke. The first versus the last, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot write this in RPW. The first TV champion was Poke. The last TV champion before it retired was Charmander. Charmander's been in from the beginning as well. What a fantastic main event it's been. Another unfortunate loss by Fredo. The first or the last. Who is going to be the next? Ladies and gentlemen, he's taking over. Irish Whip off the rope. Referee going away just a little bit. Face first goes Charmander in the turnbuckle. Charmander fighting back though. Look at the action. Up close and personal. The camera work today has been phenomenal. By Brett. It really, really has. He's been learning, that's for sure. Charmander. Oh, submission in the corner. Submission in the corner. Joel oh, poke fight time with a whipper snapper. Nice takedown there. The lights above the arena. Poke has Charmander up on his shoulders. And face first into the turnbuckle goes Charmander. Oh, Charmander with a cover off the clothesline. Off the lariat. And Poke might be done. Oh, the shoulder gets up. The shoulder gets up. Charmander can tie Venus 9 record history reign. Charmander can literally tie Venus uh, title reign right now with 9. Or title record, I guess, with 9 titles in RPW. Poke could be the first of a triple champion of season 3. Both these superstars have a lot riding on this match. The cover. Oh, it's just a one count. Poke rolling to the corner. Charmander from one corner to the other. Knee strike right to the face. Cover by Charmander. Here on Poke. Shoulders are down. Oh, his shoulders get up by two. Oh, Charmander setting up. This could truly be the finish for Poke. An octopus stretch again. When I think of Charmander, I don't really think of a submission superstar. Oh, but he is one. Poke taps, ladies and gentlemen. Poke taps out. And Charmander ties Venus record with nine championships in RPW. The most titles held in Regents Pro Wrestling. The TV title is back. A fan favorite championship, which looks amazing. Again, will only be defended on Rise shows, ladies and gentlemen. What a beautiful looking belt. And who better than Charmander? The man that lost the championship, started number one, regains the TV title. Ladies and gentlemen, what a Rise show this has been. Three title matches, three new title matches as well, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations to everyone. What a show it's been. And we will catch you on Friday Night Fury. Rate the show out of 10. What a day it's been. We move on to Fury. RPW Season 3 is absolutely heating up. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your sleeves rolled up. Much of always, take care. And this is who we are.